Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm here in my neighbor's garage taking a look at his 2010 Hyundai Genesis. This one has the V8 4.6 liter engine. Anyways, he gives me a call, tells me that he's on the other side of town. His battery light came on. All of a sudden, his steering got really hard and jerky. He managed to stop at an auto zone where they connected one of those uh, alternator battery testers. They found that his battery was low and they found that his alternator was not charging. He did manage to make it back to his house, but he wanted me to check it out, make sure that the alternator really is our problem here. Now, a quick side note, uh, the reason that his steering was getting hard, I'm guessing is probably because this thing utilizes electronic power steering. And it is thunderstorming outside, so I don't know if you guys heard that big thunderclap. Anyway, like I said, his alternator's not charging, which is probably why the electronic power steering started to give out. I did check to make sure that the belt was still on there because obviously that's one of the first things you wanna check. Anyways, you guys already know how we do it. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do was a quick preliminary check on the charging system. What I'm gonna be using is this little King Bolin BM580. This is a battery tester. It's also an alternator tester. We're going to go ahead and hook it up to the connections up here. Oh, and this is also a starter load tester. It's called a battery analyzer. You guys can see this thing powered up. We have some different things that we can do. Uh, check, waveform, playback, record, setup. We can even do multimeter. So this thing has quite a few different functions. We're gonna do our check. We're gonna hit okay. This is a 12 volt system and this is in the vehicle. So we're gonna do a test on the charging system, but we do need to start up the vehicle first. And there you can see our battery light indicating that we do have a problem with the charging system. We're gonna hit okay. And you guys can see it actually does a ripple test on the alternator. It's measuring the amount of ripple and it's giving us a voltage reading here. Now it's doing a load test. It says here, keep the RPM between 2,500 and 3,500 RPM. It's gonna hit okay. It's testing the alternator under a load. As you can see, loaded, we're at 11.44 volts. Unloaded, we're at 11.63 volts. You can see it gives us a ripple measurement, which is actually pretty cool. Very useful to have that when you're worried about having too much AC current pumped into your system. And as you can see here, our results is that we don't have enough output. Now using a little tester like this, I mean, it's a pretty neat tool to have, but quite honestly, it's not as accurate as I would like for it to be. Again, you guys have to remember that this thing is testing it at the battery connection not directly at the alternator. So if we wanna be 100% sure that this thing needs an alternator, we need to go directly to the alternator, do a voltage drop test across the cable between the connection directly at the alternator and the connection at the battery. And while we're down there, we also need to do some checks at the connector on the back of the alternator. This vehicle in particular uses a computer controlled design. So that means the ECM sends a signal to the alternator. Without this signal reaching the alternator, this thing is not going to charge. Like I said, a tester like this, it's still a nice tool to have, but if you wanna be 100% sure, you're gonna to have to do some more testing. So the next thing we need to do is remove this air intake tubing so that we can gain access to the alternator that's buried down there at the bottom. A few moments later. All right guys, so as you can see, I have the air intake tubing out. I also went ahead and I removed the air box to gain access to alternator, which is right there. Now, what I wanted to show you is that I have my meter here hooked up, but the B post or the battery cable so the alternator is actually on the back side of the alternator and it's really difficult to get to. I'm gonna to try to take you down in there, right there. If you take a look at the copper stud sticking out, that is our battery cable connection to the back of the alternator. So because I can't even get my hand in there, I'm just gonna take a long screwdriver like this and I'm gonna use one of my leads and attach it to the screwdriver. Then I'm going to take the screwdriver and touch it to the terminal on the back of the alternator. Now, when you do this, you have to be real careful not to touch this to a ground. That includes the engine block or the body. You can start this thing up. Now that it's running, I'm gonna use the screwdriver to get a voltage measurement directly at the alternator. And as you guys can see, we have 11.5 volts at the alternator, which is roughly the same thing we saw directly at the battery connection. Now what I could also do is switch my negative lead over to the positive post and we can do an actual voltage drop test on this cable, which essentially means we're going to be reading the difference in voltage. We don't have a significant difference in voltage. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the alternator is not charging and we don't have a continuity problem in the cable between the alternator and the battery. 
All right, guys, so before we continue any further, I do want to take a quick moment to give you guys a brief overview of how the charging system on this vehicle works. Like I said before, this is what I consider to be a computer controlled system, which means that the ECM regulates the regulator inside of the alternator. It says so right here in the description, the charging voltage of this alternator is regulated by the ECM. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, it tells us that the alternator management system controls the charging voltage set point in order to improve fuel economy, manage alternator load under various operation conditions, keep the battery charged, and protect the battery from overcharging. The ECM controls generating voltage by duty cycle, charging control, discharging control, normal control, based on battery conditions and vehicle operating conditions. So what that means is that the computer is going to send a duty cycle signal to the regulator that's built into the alternator, and that's what's going to tell the alternator at what percentage it should be charging. So with that in mind, let's move over to the wiring diagram. Okay, so here we have a wiring diagram of the charging system. If you look down here, this box is our alternator. It says so right here off to the side, alternator. And if you look at our connections here, we basically have two main things attached to the alternator. We have the big battery cable, which is what we already checked. This is the cable that goes from the battery to the B post at the alternator. Once again, we already did a voltage drop test across this cable, so we know we don't have any issues here. Now, if you look over here, we have this dotted line going across the top. This is going to be our connector at the back of the alternator. There are four wires on that connector. You can see that they're numbered here one, four, two, and three. And what we want to do next is identify what each of these wires are for and what we should expect to see with the voltmeter when we go to check them. So first of all, we'll start with pin number one. If you look in here, it's designated as ignition one. That generally means that this is going to be an ignition power source, probably to power up this internal regulator. And if we follow it up here, you'll see that it comes from this fuse box. There's a 15 amp fuse here. And if you look up here at the top, it says hot in on or start. So what we wanna do first is go to this pin number one, which is a green wire. And what we expect to see here is going to be battery voltage with the key in the on position or with the engine running. So next up we have pin number four. And if you look here, it's designated as FR. And if you follow this wire up, it goes directly to the ECM, which is our engine control module. Again, the ECM is going to send a duty cycle signal to this voltage regulator in the alternator. And that's what the regulator uses to determine how much output this alternator should be putting out. Now, one of the things that they don't mention in the description which we can see from here in the wiring diagram is that we actually have a second wire uh, coming from the alternator going to the ECM. What this wire most likely is, is going to be a feedback circuit. So once again, the ECM is going to send out a duty cycle signal to the regulator, but it's going to expect to see some type of feedback signal coming from this regulator. So when we check pins number four and number two at the alternator, we're gonna be using a graphing meter because once again, we want to see that we have a duty cycle signal coming and going on these two lines. Now, as far as what duty cycle percentage we should be seeing, I'm not really sure. It doesn't tell us in the description. So we're really not gonna worry about that. We really just wanna check for signal integrity and to see if our signal is actually reaching the alternator. So once again, pin number four is going to be a blue wire and pin number two is going to be an orange wire. And finally, we have pin number three, which is a white wire. If you take a look at the description here, it says for the lamp. And if you follow it up here, this goes through the IP junction box, comes out and goes to the instrument cluster where we have our battery light. And if you follow this back up through the instrument cluster, back into the IP junction box, you'll see that we have this 10 amp cluster fuse, which is what actually feeds the power through this light bulb. So because our light is actually coming on, we can probably assume that this circuit is okay. We really need to concentrate more on pins number one, which is our ignition feed, pins number four, and pins number two, which is our two communication lines. So with that understanding, let's move back over to the vehicle and do our checks. Okay, so next up, we're gonna attack the connector. I've already got it disconnected from the alternator. And as you guys can see, I am back probed on the green wire. Again, this is our ignition feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key on. I shouldn't have to start the engine. We should have battery voltage here with the key in the on position. Okay, key is on and you can see we do have full battery voltage. Again, our battery is pretty low, of course, because the alternator is not charging. So that's why we only see 11.8 volts. Okay, so now we're on the blue wire. I'm gonna start the engine up. And as you guys can see, we do show a duty cycle signal. Let me zoom in on that. Okay, so now we're at a 50 millisecond time base. You can see we do have a good square wave signal. So let me go ahead and shut it off and switch over to the orange wire. Okay, so now we're on the orange wire. I'm gonna start this thing up. 
And once again, there you have it, a good signal. Let me zoom in on that square wave. We'll go ahead and set a trigger. Go down to a 10 millisecond time base. You guys can see we have a nice clean square wave. There you have it guys. We are 100% sure that this vehicle needs a new alternator. We're gonna go ahead and order it, replace it, and we'll retest the system. Tomorrow. So here we have the old alternator and here we have our new one ready to go in the car. All right guys, so fast forward. We've got the new alternator installed. Everything's back together. We'll move inside the vehicle and start this thing up. Got my foot on the brake. Engine starts up. Take a look at that. We no longer have a battery light. So at this point, everything looks good. I'm gonna let this thing run for a minute so that the battery can charge up. We'll reconnect the tester and check the results. So once again, we've got the battery analyzer connected to our two posts over here. We're gonna go in to check mode. This is a 12 volt system, of course. In vehicle, we are going to do a charging test. Again, you can see it's doing a ripple test. At this point, it does tell us to hold the RPM somewhere around 2,500, 3,500 RPM. But because I'm here by myself, I'm not gonna bother. We're just gonna load test it like this at idle. And as you guys can see, our result loaded 14.10 volts, unloaded 14.29. Our ripple is at 59 millivolts. So our results are normal. This charging system is operating properly. This was definitely a fix. Now the only thing left to do is load test the battery and make sure it's still in good condition. So in order to test the battery, we're gonna go ahead and shut the vehicle off. Now a quick side note, something that I just realized um, while trying to test this battery is that it actually turns out that these two jump posts under the hood are not good for doing a battery load test because when I try to do it, it gives me some really inconsistent readings. And I've already tried it with this tester and my other tester here, my Schumacher tester. And both of them are telling me the same thing. They're telling me that we're only pulling about 300 cold cranking amps through these connections here when we know that we have a 900 cold cranking amp battery. So there's definitely something about these posts here that don't allow us to get a proper reading when we're trying to check the battery. I even found that it says here, on the lid, the above terminal serves only engine starting. Please do not use by any means other than engine starting. So that might have something to do with why we can't load test the battery from this point, but no big deal. We're just gonna move into the trunk and connect our tester directly to the battery. All right, so moving under the trunk, we've got our battery tester connected to our battery. We're gonna go ahead and hit check. Again, 12 volt. This is in vehicle and we are doing a battery test. This is a regular flooded battery. Our cold cranking amp rating, once again, is 900 cold cranking amps, CCA. We'll hit okay. As you guys can see, our state of charge, 99%. Our battery is good. I guess while we're here, if you guys are interested in this product, you can take a look at the other functions it has. We can look at a waveform of our battery voltage here. It's pretty neat. We can also do a quick playback. Looks like this thing also records. So there's a lot of things that you can do. There's also a multimeter here, hit 12 volts. That's actually pretty cool. It gives us a nice chart. There's also, as you guys might've noticed, a uh, starter function or checking the starter function. If we go back to check, go down to 12 volt system in vehicle, scroll down here. There is a startup test where we can check our starter motor. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna show you guys uh, the options that this thing gives you. Pretty neat little tool. Does a lot more than your basic battery tester. So if you guys are interested, check this one out. Link is in the description. Anyways, guys, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and end off the video. Like I always say, I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.